Welcome to our video on Batman, the doom that came to Gotham. This gripping story follows the Dark Knight as he faces off against one of his most formidable foes yet. Gotham City, 1928. Bruce Wayne comes home after a 20-year absence to investigate the origins of a curse that caused his parents' demise. What is the reptile beast leaving a trail of death throughout the city? And what horrible fate does the testament of Ghoul foretell? Bruce Wayne must adopt the disguise of the bat to discover the truth. Along the way, he'll confront popular enemies from his rogues gallery and make shocking discoveries about the true nature of the crisis. Filled with action, suspense, and twists and turns, Batman, the doom that came to Gotham, is a must-read for fans of the Caped Crusader and fans of comics in general. With stunning artwork and a thrilling narrative, it's sure to keep you on the edge of your seat. So join us as we explain what happens in this awesome Batman Elseworld tale. The story begins in 1928, with Bruce Wayne being absent from Gotham for 20 years. He is on the Argo at Cape Victoria, in Antarctica, with Alfred Pennyworth, Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and Tim Drake. They are searching for the missing Professor Oswald Cobblepot and his Gotham University expedition. When they find the ship, Bruce goes in search of Cobblepot. Meanwhile, Dick Grayson finds Cobblepot's journal, which shows that things weren't going well for the team. Bruce spots Cobblepot standing naked on a cliff edge. He shouts him but he leaves. Bruce enters the cave and finds Grendon using a pickaxe to break through some ice. A bunch of deformed penguins attack Bruce, so he fires at them and scares them off. He is then attacked by Grendon. Bruce manages to knock him out and notices some strange tentacles hanging out of the ice. He gets Tim Drake to bring him some dynamite, and he blows the cave to bits. As it explodes Bruce hears something say the thing is coming. When asked about Cobblepot, Bruce says that he is probably still in the cave and that it's for the best. However, he is still alive, and watches the ship sail away back to Gotham. They lock Grendon away, and the pantry freezes all around him, as he talks to himself. When they arrive in Gotham, Bruce has flashbacks, about the day he lost his parents, the killer said, the thing is coming when he killed them, so it plays on Bruce's mind. When they arrive at the mansion, they find a man tied to a chair, Bruce using his detective skills analyzes the man, picking up the smell of chemicals and reptiles on him. The man is on the edge of death, and says that his name is Langstrom before taking his last breath. A huge flame emerges from the fireplace. A man appears from behind them, and asks to speak to Bruce alone. As they talk, Bruce can see the man's demonic reflection in the mirror, and he changes form, as he gives the full bits of information to Bruce. He proceeds to tell Bruce a list of things, the first, is that he will have to deal with the sins of his father, and that returning home has set off a chain of events, that are meant to be. The second, is that Bruce Wayne must die, the third is a bit more cryptic and is beware dust come alive again. And the final one, is that to save Gotham, he must cut out its heart. Taking on a demon form, he then jumps out of a window. Bruce asks Alfred to put Langstrom's body into the cave. Bruce, Dick, and Tim, visit Oliver Queen, who tells him that Jim Gordon is now chief of police, and Harvey Dent is running for mayor. Bruce asks Oliver if he knows a reptile scientist named Langstrom, and is surprised when Oliver refers to him as the Batman, and that he works with bats. Tim and Dick stay at Oliver's, and Bruce dons his Batman costume and heads to Kirk Langstrom's apartment, where he finds a bunch of corrupt cops rooting through his possessions. Batman takes them out, and finds some handwritten letters under the floorboards. More police arrive and he escapes, he reads Langstrom's notes that talk about something terrible coming, and that the only thing that can help, is the testament of ghoul that is hid away in Professor Crosby Manford's library. The letters talk of a mysterious woman that is trying to get the book, and it is incredibly important, that she doesn't get hold of the book. Bruce watches from another rooftop with his gadgets, 
and calls Professor Manford and asks for the testament of Ghoul. He panics, hangs up, and gets the book, only for Talia to arrive and take it from him. Batman appears and attempts to take the book, but Talia orders Daitya to attack him. The demon man that paid Bruce a visit helps Batman, and it's revealed that his name is Etrigan. Etrigan fights Daitya, allowing Batman to chase Talia, but he is defeated by a large reptilian man. While unconscious, Batman is thrown into her boat and they leave. She sends the reptilian creature off to do another job. Jim Gordon and Harvey Dent are stood on the dock looking at Bruce's ship that has completely frozen over. Oliver Queen appears, with Dick Grayson and Tim Drake. Dick Grayson heads over to Bruce's ship, declining the assistance that Jim Gordon offers. Dick Grayson finds Jason Todd frozen at the radio's controls, Grandin appears and taunts Grayson, and Grayson responds by calling him Mr. Freeze. The reptilian creature appears, Grayson tries to shoot it, but he is ripped apart. Jim Gordon heads over to the ship, and they find the bodies of both Jason Todd and Dick Grayson, Tim sadly sees his brothers in their horrible condition. Batman wakes to Talia performing a ritual, when he asks her who she is, she says that she is Talia Al Ghul, the daughter of Ra's Al Ghul, the man who found a tomb of pre-human serpent men, and stayed down there for a year collecting the forbidden knowledge that the tomb contained. When he finally left, he was ripped apart in front of a crowd, by some type of spirit that had followed him from the tomb. Using the forbidden knowledge in the book, Talia was able to capture a djinn that granted her a long life. However, she was buried, and waited until she heard her father's calling. She woke from her tomb after 100 years with her father's ashes, but the book was gone, and she has spent the remaining centuries searching for the book. She calls for Daitya, who arrives with his bottle, that he has now placed Etrigan in. Talia allows him to go back to whichever hell he came from. She then throws Ra's al Ghul's ashes into the fiery pit, and he rises from it. Batman manages to break his shackles, and Ra's al Ghul says that he will give him an honorable death. Batman is attacked by a whole bunch of lizards, and has to fight for his life against the onslaught in the sewers. Over the next three days, Gotham City is filled with reptiles as they attack and cause problems for the citizens. Harvey promises that if he wins the election, he will make getting rid of the lizards his first priority. When he wins on the third day, down in the sewers, August Grendon is forced to give up what was given to him, in the cave by Yubiogoroth. Grendon melts away, and transfers itself into a weed, that takes on the form of a plant woman. Ra's al Ghul hears on the radio that Harvey Dent has won the election, and sends the plant woman to meet him. She takes on the form of a beautiful redhead, and speaks to Harvey Dent, she touches his hand and poisons him. Batman pulls himself out of the sewer, and has visions of himself as a child seeing a giant tentacled monster, attacking Gotham City. When Tim wakes up, he cannot find Oliver Queen, he searches for him and finds him in front of an altar praying, while dressed in chain mail. Tim asks him what he is doing, and Oliver tells him that he is chosen to destroy an evil that is coming. He shows Tim some arrowheads that are magical, and have the blood of Saint Sebastian on them. The plant woman, takes on plant form and attacks Oliver, he fights back but fails, and is killed. Tim picks up a sword and fights her off as Batman appears. He grabs a fiery stick and sets her on fire. Tim tells Bruce about the arrows that Oliver told him about and Batman senses the magic in them. Harvey Dent visits his doctor, Herbert West, as one side of his body and face are covered in a rash. The doctor tells him not to worry. At home, Harvey Dent mutates even further, and when Talia arrives at his home, he begs for her to kill him. While at Dick and Jason's graves, Jim Gordon approaches Bruce, and asks if he can talk to his daughter who claims to be spiritual. She tells him, that he has two spirits with him, and that one of them thanks him for taking on his burden, and wants him to make peace with him in his cave, and the other wants to meet him in the old courthouse. 
Bruce speaks to Langstrom first, and then finds out that the second spirit, is that of Professor Crosby Manford. He possesses Barbara's body to reveal himself. His spirit tells Batman, that he was over 100 years old. He explains that himself, Bartley Langstrom, Henry Queen, and Thomas Wayne, were some of the first settlers in Gotham. Greed led them to making a deal with a man named Ludwig Prynne, who led them into some old catacombs, where they all did foul rituals and sealed the doomed fate of Gotham, that was to be built over the catacombs. Angered by Prynne, they beat him to within an inch of his life, and buried him down in the catacombs, where he mutated into the lizard creature that killed Dick Grayson. Over time, Henry was driven mad, and he was the one who killed Bruce's parents. Oliver Queen eventually learned some of the truth, and felt like his destiny was to be the hero that saves Gotham. When the spirit leaves, Batman drops down into a huge cavern that has opened in the ground. He is attacked by the lizard creature, but Batman doesn't waste any time killing it. He finds Harvey Dent suffering, as he has mutated further, and bonded to the doorway. Batman enters the doorway and finds Rayish al Ghul performing a ritual. Using two of Oliver's arrows, Batman takes out two wolf men that attack him. A huge tentacled monster begins to rise from the depths of the earth. Batman fires the third arrow into the testament of Ghul, causing it to catch fire, and making Rayish al Ghul drop it. Rayish al Ghul uses everything he has got to kill Batman, but all it does is mutate him into an actual man-bat. Rayish al Ghul keeps shouting, that he is yogg Sothar, but Batman just tells him that he is a pawn. Talia is grabbed by one of the tentacles of the huge creature. Batman grabs the Testament of Ghoul, which still has the arrow in it, and stabs it into Rayish al Ghul's chest, killing him. The bottle that Etrigan is imprisoned in, drops and smashes, releasing him, he then attacks the tentacled creature, forcing it back down into the depths, and causing an explosion that throws Batman back through the gateway. Harvey Dent catches fire, and the doorway closes, but not before the courtroom goes up in an explosion. The story ends six months later as Tim Drake speaks to a crowd about the Wayne Foundation, helping to rebuild Gotham. As he does, Batman, still in his bat form, watches from the roof of the building. If you enjoyed this Batman Elseworlds story, please like, comment or subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as it helps to support the channel.